Hey everybody. Here we're looking at this old Aspire TurboLink power supply, which of course Aspire is now a Pavia. And this power supply is very old. It's from I believe 2001. And from the model number, I believe this is a Channelwell Technology OEM power supply. Let's kind of look at that spec label. Pause if you use specs. So anyways, this is a channel well power supply, assuming by the model number, and it's rated for 420 watt max, and it's a very 5 volt heavy power supply, 40 amps on the 5 volt rail, which was actually not too bad for back in the day when this power supply was manufactured, but of course many cutlass wonder power supplies today still have this old format with a very 5 volt heavy set up in a minus 5 volt rail and I'm pretty sure that the ratings on this unit are um, not accurate they're actually overrated for example the 5 volt standby rail is rated for 3 amps not many supplies out there even the high end ones are rated for that much most power supplies you'll typically find either 2 amps maybe 2.5 amps sometimes 3 amps in the highest wattage units but the common amount for this rail is usually 2 amps. Let's go ahead and look inside. This power supply came from my buddy Tim and it ran his computer for many years. And then he converted this power supply into a 12 volt supply by hooking up these connectors to the side. And he installed a resistor on the 5 volt rail to kind of even out the load amount on the power supply. And just have a look inside this thing and how filthy it is. This power supply has had a very, very rough life. Back in the day when it was powering its computer, the computer was involved in a house fire. And it was a very, very bad house fire. Most of my buddy's stuff was ruined. Not to mention the house was pretty much a total loss. And this power supply along with the computer that I was in, didn't actually get in the fire, but it did get out, get all the smoke. And this power supply was actually washed out with grease lightning and everything. And this is just as clean as he could get it. And it's still, you can tell, it still looks pretty bad. You can see all the soot inside this thing. But amazingly, it still managed to work for many years after. And, um... And I think a couple years ago, in the computer that I was in, it was starting to get a little bit. The, the rails were starting to drop, and eventually he decided to go ahead and turn this into a lab supply, to a 12 volt supply. And um, this is where I'd show you what the gutless wonders of the early 2000s look like compared to the ones now. It's funny to note this power supply actually does have a thermal fan controller on the exhaust fan. And this thermal fan controller is screwed to the heatsink. I could take that out if I wanted to, which I will. I'm going to reuse this in something. Basically, it just plugs into the main PCB, which gets 12 volts. And this regulates the fan based on the temperature inside the power supply. And if I'm not mistaken, when this power supply was being used as a 12 volt supply, it was getting so many amps pulled through it to the point where it was smoking. And eventually what did it in was my buddy Tim had an RC car battery on top of this fan cooling it off. And what he decided to do was take a paper towel and wet it and wrap the battery to cool it off. And um, the reason why it was the battery was sitting on top of this power supply was because the charger was running out the power supply. And some water fell in and shorted things out. And that's finally what did this thing in. Anyways, notice there's no filtering components here. No coil, no X capacitors, no Y capacitors, not even on the plug. We do have a bridge rectifier though. Some cheap power supplies do have these, but most of them have four diodes instead of this. Here are two high voltage capacitors. They appear to be, I believe, 470 microfarad. They're so dirty I can't really see. Here is a look at the main switchers. And I believe this power supply uses a two transistor 5 volt standby rail. Most cheap power supplies 
use that and that's actually if you've seen my other videos about the Bastec ATX 250 12E power supply this design is what can kill motherboards if there's no protection circuitry in place and here's a look at the secondary side yes we have two large rectifiers and we have a small one the big ones I believe are for the 5 volts and 3.3 volt rails and the small one is for a 12 volt rail considering that this unit is a 5 volt heavy supply it's funny to note that um, this power supply has caps on capacitors in it but all these look just fine and like I say this power supply has been going for probably 8 years or so now let's go ahead and pop open another gutless wonder that's newer and show what it looks like inside okay now we're looking at a power model PW-500 another, another nice gutless wonder and um, notice right here the plus 5 volt is 36 amps another 5 volt heavy supply now of course um, these ratings here are not true because I'll show you why in just a moment anyways pause of use specs okay let's go and have a look inside this one first we'll start with the primary side this one has 470 microfarad main capacitors no filtering components well actually they do have little, two little bitty capacitors there but those aren't exactly the ones you should use in a um, setup like this normally the ones they use are either blue or sometimes tan unlike these here which are more of a brownish color there's no X capacitors no coils they do have a bridge rectifier which is a 4 amp rectifier and the heat sinks are actually half decent that's probably the best thing on this power supply is the heat sinks Here's a closer look at the transformers. Now let's look at the secondary side. The output capacitors are a mix of full tech and Jun Fu. Let's look at these secondary rectifiers. Let me use some light so I can see. And there they are. The one on the left, I believe, is responsible for 3.3 um, volt and it's rated for 16 amps. And all three of these are MOS specs. And the one in the middle, I believe, is for plus 12 volt, 10 amps. The next one over is rated for, let me see if I can find it, 20. So in actuality, to, from what the secondary is, um, this thing has a 20 amp 5 volt rail, a 10 amp 12 volt rail, and a 16 amp 3.3 volt rail. Now of course quality power supplies overbuild their units on the secondary output rectifiers. Usually they'll put in ones rated for much higher than what the power supply is going to be putting out. And with the primary Switching transistors. I looked at the monitors, but I couldn't find much of anything about these. So I'm not sure how much, how many amps they can do. On the left here, we have the transistor for the 5 volt standby rail, which of course this means is a two transistor design. The fan setup on this power supply is two A millimeter fans, both getting 12 volts. On the other power supply, the exhaust fan was on the thermal fan controller. Both fans in this unit get 12 volts at all times. This is common for um, gutless Warner power supplies. Now, if you think this is a bad power supply, go look at my channel. I've seen much worse. So anyways, any questions or comments, feel free to ask.